Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. In this one, we're going to be transforming this image. So I don't know if you've seen this popular look that has been trending for some time now where object looks like she or she is standing on a myla. A myla is a reflective surface that, you know, folds and gives this zigzag kind of water wave effect. So you see your model standing on such stuffs. Of course, people buy it and they install it in their studios for those kind of photography. But if you are a low budget photographer or someone that doesn't have it and you still want to achieve such a look in your pictures, in this video, we're going to be exploring how you can do that and beautiful parts that we also give you out of the Bible who are using in this one for free. So you can always try it out on your pictures and see it. All right, so that was been much of the time. Let's quickly get started. The first thing we need to do, but we want to replace such an effect that we'll have to separate our object from our background, which is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to you know, make a selection of my subject. All right, so once the selection is made, right click and go to select inverse. You might as well want to zoom in to make sure that your selection is not selecting extra or less of the things you wanted to select. So we look over here, our quick selection didn't quite select properly, so we have to manually make the modifications by ourselves. All right, so once the selection is done, I want to zoom in on some other areas. Okay, so once selection is done, make a duplicate of your background layer. Right click and go to layer the cut. Now, if probably you are not working with a white background, at this point, you might want to go to your filter, brush and blur to blur it out so that you get a very smooth background. Or you are working with a different color entirely. At this point, you might need to go to solid color, select your gray, 50% gray, or you can just come to the brightness here and type 50. It's going to give you 50% gray. Press OK, change the blend mode to color. So any of the two ways can serve you if you are not using pure white background. So the reason I'm not going to take that step is because I'm using a pure white background. So while working on a pure white background, how to do now manage your shadows and all of that we are going to be learning so the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in the background we are going to be using so let me get it in all right so this is the background we're going to be using i need to place it properly put my anchor points here and scale it in so we'll have it right where we want it to be but the next uh, the major issue we are having right now is that she's floating on the air and why is she floating? Her shadow is not on the floor. So if she's ever going to look like she's standing on that floor, we need to introduce her shadows on the floor or restore the original shadows. And that is what we're going to do. We'll restore the original shadows of the woman. And how do we do that? We'll come to this background, which was where we cut it out from and we recreate it. So we'll just make a duplicate of the background layer and drag it all the way to the second layer. And immediately the shadows comes back. But it doesn't just come back as shadows. It came back with the whole background. So there are a few ways we can approach. We can actually change the blend mode. But another thing we can do is that we can double clip on it. I've actually not tried this before, but let's see if it works. Since the background is white and the shadow is black or dark, we can easily just remove the highlight from the image and just retain the shadows. Yes, we can just split this all the way down to the shadows and we can, you know, through here retain it. But of course that is not working, so it's not an option we can take. Okay, so that doesn't work. The next thing we'll do is to change the blend mode to multiply. So the moment you change the blend mode to multiply, the original shadows just comes back. So what it does is that it tries to take away everything that is bright and retain everything that is dark. And our shadow is dark. And that is why we're able to retain it. Now we've been able to bring back our shadows. Remember, you take this approach when you are working on a white background. Very important. White background. Now our shadows are back. We can leave the image like this. It's pretty cool. We've actually done a bit of the work. 
but we can as well take it a notch higher and take it to a higher level. So that is what we want to do. First of all, we need to brighten up the skin tone. She's looking quite dark, so I'll just brighten up her skin. And after doing that, the next thing I want to do is to create a reflection of past on the floor. Because this is a reflective surface, it won't be good that after the whole job, she does not have a reflection on the floor. So we need to create her reflection on the floor. And how do we do that? Just make a duplicate of the object. Press Ctrl T. Uh, right click and go to select uh, flip vertically. And immediately she's going to turn upside down. And immediately she's going to turn upside down. So just drag her all the way down like this. And you are getting something that is looking like her reflection. But the problem we have here now is that if we place this on the foot, it's not going to be touching here. And if we insist on getting here, you are going to be losing here. So we need to decide exactly what we want. But since it's a reflection, the major thing we need here is colors. Not necessarily shape. A color and, you know, a little shape that can show that this is a reflection of this thing. So what can we do? We can actually just drag this all the way in. Like this. Beautiful. Change the blend mode to maybe like a uh, color. Let's see. That doesn't work. Overlay. Yeah. Then create a mask for it. To brush these areas out. And maybe this area as well. Reduce it a little. Then go to your filter. Staying on the main object and go to your filter. Go to blur. Go to Gaussian blur. So we just blur it out. In such a way that all you are going to be seeing is just the colors of her. So looking at this image now, you can tell we have a reflection of the main. Or if you still insist that you want to have the reflection of this particular one, because it's actually very necessary. Another thing we can do is to make a duplicate, right? Then drag this all the way down. Place it perfectly. Delete the mask. Just get a perfect placement for it. Just get a perfect placement for it. We do not need to apply that mask. So we'll just turn it off. Get a perfect placement for it, like this. To use these marks. Okay, we'll delete it. Then create another one for it. So this one, we'll just use it and paint over that area. Just like this. We'll not allow it to get to this area. Just paint over this area. And we are good. So we can now match the two layers together. And we'll get a perfect reflection. Look at it. So now you can decide if it add a little color to it. We are good to go. If you stop here, the job is fine. But you can take it a notch higher. So looking at the fact that she's wearing a purple dress, we can decide to leave this background as pure, you know, grayish white than it is. We can decide to Put, to push in a color into it by going to solid color select maybe the color of the dress press ok and find the blend mode that allows you blend it in so perfect look at that look at this one this is so brittle and this one as well so I'm going to just reduce it I like the way this is just going to drop it down a little. The before, the after. Trimming, take it a notch higher. You can create a curves adjustment layer here. Brighten it up a bit. Press Ctrl I. Keep up our brush. White brush. Make it hard. And just make it dark. So it gives you a smooth effect. But now I do not want that snoot effect on the background. I want it on the floor. So how do we do that? Press Ctrl T. Use your shift to you know, make it look like it's lying down. Use your perspective tool to the perspective slider. 
by holding your control to spread it out a little, then drag it all the way down to the floor where she's standing. Like this. So it just gives us an extra attention to the floor. We can even shift the color slightly away from purple. We can move it towards something that looks like pink. Uh, how do we get a pink? So we can just push in a little red and a little magenta. Yeah. Then go to your curves symbol. Go back to the mask and feather it out. You know, to look like we have a different color of lightning spreading on the floor where she's standing. You can decide to leave it as hard as it was, but it's going to look distracting to me. So let's just keep it like this. We can now even make the turn spread out a little more to create that kind of illusion that there is a light hitting her from the back, maybe like a backlight, creating a very beautiful light shape here. At this point, we'll have to drop that. Right. All right, we are good to go. So probably you might want to as well create a global color grading with your color loop up just to bring everything together. Right? So let's just find the one that will work. This is really beautiful. Amazing. Good. So of course we need to bring the very good. For the, after the extra contrast and color. All right, we are good to go. So let me show you the overall before and after. This is the image when we started. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. So how did we get this? Very simple. First of all, we separated the object from the background. Second step, we created, we brought in our background, right? Then third step, we had to bring in our shadow by duplicating our background layer, placing it in between the object and every other layer and changing the blend mode to multiply. I think we did that over here. Then of course we created a reflection. Then after doing that, you have to now create a solid color, which is practically or entirely optional. So you have to just create something to bring it together. Then the next thing we did was that we used a global color grading to bring everything together. And that was how we were able to achieve this result from this. So this. thank you so much for watching this amazing video do make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and if you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we we'll drop a new video until then see you on the next one